Now guys, I gotta be honest with you guys up front, I didn't have much faith in Maglem Lord. When I first saw the game on my Twitter timeline about a year or so back, I said, wow, the artwork for this game looks amazing. That's usually par for the course when it comes to super niche RPGs. I was looking forward to seeing some gameplay after seeing the really good artwork, and it took a minute to see some gameplay for this one, but after I finally saw some, well, to put it lightly, this game is just not a looker, like at all. Now, if you don't know, I have big feelings when it comes to graphics and even bigger feelings when it comes to performance or frame rate. I know RPGs aren't going to be powerhouses when it comes to graphics, and I don't expect a lot from the majority of the RPGs that I play when it comes to graphics, but I do have a standard or a bar in which if I see a game's graphics looking below that standard or bar, I have to ask the question, bruh, what year are we in? Why does this game look like a PS2 game? The biggest weakness to Maglem Nord, of course, is its graphics, but I'll tear that a new one later. Let's focus on what this game is. Maglem Lord is a RPG in which you play as a male or female demon lord that's pretty much lost their super demon lord powers. With the help of some companions, you're on a quest to regain your powers. Maglem Lord is pretty much a setup as a visual novel. You've got the nice artwork front and center, and it's pretty easy on the eyes. I'm not really for visual novel setups, but this game does keep things interesting by having dialogue a lot of choices that the demon lord can make mid conversation to make the flow of conversations more interesting given the options you pick during these conversations your demon lord can come off as a battle hardened crazy jerk or a lovable easygoing person with a heart of gold i found these choices kept me engaged with the game's story what's more it seems that this game has a character limit or something among those lines when it comes to its text boxes so most of the dialogue is short and sweet and to the point it never really overstays its welcome and i'm never feeling like i'm just sitting down for a long time reading a bunch of texts. Demon Lords aren't exactly in the bargain bin as a species. In fact, they're extinct. This leads to the game's dating some aspects to breathed air. Some choices you make will affect how certain characters feel about you, and thus you'll get dating events that will further increase that character's affection for you. There are a good amount of characters here, so there's plenty of playtime to go around along with different multiple endings. The characters aren't all that impressive, but they are fun and entertaining to watch at the very least. You've probably seen these types in other RPGs before, and they don't exactly do anything to make them seem different outside of their archetypes. But they aren't boring, I'll give them that. The whole setup of the story and characters kind of reminds me of a Disgaea game in a way. Maglem Lord is a very by the books RPG. You could buy equipment to increase your character stats, gain new skills, whether they be a passive or magic attacks for use in battle by spending points, and tackle the simple kill this and gather that quest. In addition to buying equipment, you can forge your own weapons for use. You have different weapon types with spears, swords and axes in the game and once you get further enough and you have the correct materials you can create even more powerful versions of these weapons as you create you can add the calls to your weapons not only for an aesthetic improvement but to also increase stats maglum lord will have you running around in dungeons and fields with enemies and little goodies to pick up along the way you enter battle once you make contact with an enemy and transition to a battlefield with a similar setup to an early ps2 tales of game i'm thinking tales of legendia During during battle, you can attack you with your equipped weapon and enemies take more damage depending on the different weapon type. Each character has a unique skill they can use along with any magic attacks at their disposal. During battle, you have a demon gauge that once it's full, you can summon your demon lord to battle to unleash holy hell on your opponents. Of course, it's best saved for boss battles, and the better you do in battle without getting hit, you can fill the gauge up even faster. Battle can be a little bit clunky at times. Sometimes I feel like my attacks don't hit or just phase through an enemy. Every time an attack lands, the game does a slowdown or a slow screen shaking effect. I can't tell at that point if the game's performance is taking a dip or it's an intentional effect, but I think I'd be giving it a really big benefit of the doubt if I say it's intentional, which I'm not inclined to do because the in-game graphics are just not good. I've literally seen low budget PS2 games look better than this. These dungeons aren't exactly easy on the eyes and not only that, they're rather bland to look at even playing the PS4 version on a PS5. Some environments do stand out, but it's absolutely nothing worth noting all that much except that, oh, it's a new place we haven't been before. Listen man, PS4 games, I don't care how low budget you are, you can't be looking like a PS2 game. It's not something I can forgive. It's like maybe this game was made with PlayStation Vita specs instead of bare minimum PS4 specs. I mean, the game is also available on Switch, but I'm pretty sure the Switch can turn out a better low-end game. I, I think. 
I don't exactly regret my time with Maglem Lord, besides having to look at the game's lackluster graphics, but I can tell you as a person who plays RPGs a lot and understands that not every RPG is going to be the Tifa of RPGs when it comes to looks, this game is not unbearable. And again, that's coming from someone who really is critical of graphics, so if I can handle it, I think you can too. This is just a decently fun game to pass the time and not something that's too terrible. Just go in expecting a fun story with some fun characters and not the biggest in-depth battle system out there. I would say it's $40 well spent, even more so if you can get the game at an even lesser price. Can't say it's a priority for you to play, but if you're in between games and looking to kill some time, Maglum Lord it wouldn't be a bad choice. Probably.